Hi, my name is Katie McCauley and I'd like to start today with a question. Does anyone in here like fab ice lollies? Raise your hand if you've been known to enjoy a fab. Okay. <laughs> if I was to do a fab right now, would that make you happy? Yes. Yeah. Good to meet you, Will. I also enjoy a fab. I think they're marvellous. And I know someone else who likes a fab. His name is Alan Bissett and he was my tutor here in 2006 when I was studying for a master's. So in 2006, Alan sent me an email to let me know that I'd received a distinction for my second folio of work. And I was so pleased by this that I wanted to bring Alan something to say thank you. By email, Alan joked that he would enjoy a fab. And as I was walking along Byers Road en route to my next tutorial, I thought, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to take in a fab. It was a beautiful summer's day. Remember those? <laughs> And as I was walking along, I discovered that nowhere was there a fab to be had. Because it was such a sunny day, they had proved particularly popular with the people sunning themselves in the botanical gardens. As we've just discovered, fabs are a popular treat. <laughs> so there I was, fabless and more than mildly disappointed, rooting around in the freezer section of Summerfield, when finally, right down at the bottom, under a bag of Aunt Bessie's roast potatoes, I came across a box, slightly battered, containing eight fabs. I was very pleased, but also I knew that this box presented me with a problem. Because Alan only needed one fab. And while usually I'd be the sort of person who's delighted to discover myself suddenly in possession of seven spare fabs, my tutorial was going to last for an hour. It was very hot, and I was perturbed that these seven spare fabs wouldn't last a distance. So there on Byers Road, I made another snap decision, and I thought, what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to give these fabs away en route to my tutorial, and other people can have the fabs instead. That's what I did. At this point, I kind of imagined myself as a female Scottish version of Willy Wonka, <laughs> merrily skipping down the street, <laughs> handing out fabs to grateful, smiling people, except that generally, people didn't smile. They seemed confused, bemused, Fearful, even. A lot of the people seem to think that I was one of those charity workers that tries to get you to sign up um, to give a direct debit every month, or they thought that really I wanted to sell them something and this fab was just a way to draw them in. Or even worse, perhaps, that I was working in tandem with some sort of criminal, and while I distracted them with the fab, someone would leap out from behind the bushes and steal their wallet. So I didn't manage to give away any of the seven fabs. And when I think about this now, it makes me sad because I think. The one thing that a gift is meant to do is to create good feeling. Um, if you think about it, you give a gift in order to maintain perhaps an existing relationship you have with someone, but sometimes a gift has more potential than that. It can kickstart a new friendship. That's why when you go around to someone's house for dinner, you take them a box of chocolates or a bottle of wine. And when someone has a baby and you go to meet them for the first time, you take them the gift. You want to start that relationship on the right foot. I believe so strongly in the power of a gift to create good feeling that I wanted to try again. And so, last week, I asked a friend of mine to help me. His name is David Carroll, and he works as a professional baker in the West End of Glasgow. Last week, David baked me 25 peanut butter blondies. I took those 25 peanut butter blondies, I divided them between five tins, and I gave the five tins to five people who I know. Now, this is where it gets complicated, so it would be helpful if you could think of me just for a moment as a stuffed moose. <laughs> so, I gave the first tin to someone whom I know, and I told them, here, have a blondie. When you're finished, please pass the tin on to someone who you know, but who does not know me. This next person was instructed to do the same. Please accept the gift of a blondie, then pass the tin on to someone who you know, but who does not know the person who gave you the tin, and so on, until the tins were empty. If you received a tin, and that's why you're here today, can I just ask you if you could put your hand up? Okay, so there's a few of you here today. That's brilliant. Thank you so much for coming. If you think about it, this is where your curiosity might pay off. Because you receive the tin from someone who you know, but then may pass the tin on to someone who you don't know. But maybe you should know that person. You already have one friend in common. So, I'm just about to finish up here, but we have this room until one o'clock. So you might want to stay around and just see if you have something in common, make a new friend with one of these people who's been along today. And also, if you've come here and you haven't received a tin and you're feeling left out, you still might want to hang around for a little while because I've still got seven baths to give. <laughs>